Call to order. This is the 22nd regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren? Here. Bauk? Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hannah? Here. Heideman? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Raisler? Here. Sampson? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Versi? Here. And Wongaman? Here. 16 present. We have a quorum. Now if uh, Alderman Sampson can please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kevin. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the last Common Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. <clears throat> Honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Jane Kautzer to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee, term to expire 4-25-2011. Terry Kautzer to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee, term to expire 4-25-2011. Signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Steve. That lies over. <coughs> that is all for appointments. Uh, moving on, public forum. Uh, no one this evening. No public forum this evening. Mayor's announcements. I will be brief this evening. Uh, I don't know if everybody noticed, but we got another close to a foot of snow in the last couple of days, and I'd like to congratulate uh, our Department of Public Works on doing a fine job this year on a, uh, on a limited budget. Um, I know in my office, which always seems to get the uh, largest number of complaints, that uh, the complaints have been much fewer than the compliments this year, so I'd like to uh, say thank you to all of our hardworking people in the Department of Public Works for doing a fine job for our citizens. And that's all for the mayor's announcements. Consent agenda. <laughs> President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I, I move that all RCs be accepted and adopted, all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all ordinances and resolutions be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass the consent agenda under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Just for clarification, on 2217, what is the cost of that? Did we ever finalize the cost of the uh, uh, remodeling of the uh, first floor? On the first floor remodeling, Alderman Hammond, would you like to answer that? Thank you. Um, it, it's about 135000 Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Is there any further discussion on the consent agenda? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wongaman? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2219 and 2220 to be referred. Reports of officers 2. 2221 through 2229 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three, 2230 by Alder persons. Hammond, Bauk, and Rinfleisch rescinding 2010 personal property taxes for four assessment numbers. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Uh, I, I know these are all uh, referred to us by numbers, but uh, is there any way we could get the names of these that are being rescinded? Or is that Alderman Hammond? Uh, they are available um, from my memory. One was the Penn Avenue Pub, David Cloutier, um, and the other two I 
I don't remember um, who they are. They were provided at committee. Um, I apologize that they weren't part of the packet, but those the were reason the I ask is numbers don't mean much, but individual businesses would. So, is there any way that could be included whenever this comes up? I don't see why not. I mean, again, it was part of the the finance package, which was obviously out there publicly. But again, we can make sure it's in there next time. Thank but you. those are the two businesses that I recall. Okay. It's and the other one was, I'm um, sorry, let me, re sorry, Mr. Mayor. One of them also was a, um, an AV, but they're no longer in business, I believe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree. Uh, having the, the names here would definitely help. Uh, but just to clarify, we're not actually, in terms of personal property taxes, they're not being assessed to the business. They're being assessed to that assessment number. So legally in this document, that's what we have to go by is my understanding. Uh, but I, I don't see any reason why we can't be attached with, with other additional names. Uh, second, also to clarify, this isn't the business tax, uh, property taxes. It's the personal property tax portion of that businesses. Uh, these were not uh, businesses that are contesting um, as we see in the newspaper, some uh, larger businesses contesting their, their assessed value. Uh, these were errors done in the assessor's um, um, office that were clarified. So uh, just to clarify, this is not what you've seen in the papers. This is uh, on a much smaller scale and for uh, mistakes and errors that were made in the uh, assessor's office. Right, and if we total this up, it looks like it's uh, somewhere around, it's less than $4,000 total. Correct. Correct. Okay. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cott? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2231 by Alder Persons Hammond, Boak, and Rinfleisch, designating RBC. Wealth Management is an official institutional fixed income securities broker dealer for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Nobody in this uh, council chamber owns RBC Wealth Management, obviously. No. Very good. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. Anyway. Um, if there is no discussion, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cott? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2232 by Alder Persons, Hannah Kittleson and Vanderweel. Lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a firefighter, paramedic, and fire department. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Sampson. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just, just a quick question here. What happens if we do not approve the hiring freeze for this, this position? And, and why, why are we lifting the hiring freeze in the first place? Um, if I can answer that uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, if we do not authorize the hiring of this individual by contract, which was approved by the Common Council, um, we did uh, set a floor of a minimum number of firefighter paramedics in the fire department. Uh, if we do not fill this position, we are in violation of that contract. It will be grieved, I would be rather sure uh, by the uh, fire department uh, labor representatives um, and uh, from what I understand discussing this with Tom Rice uh, we would not win that grievance as, as a city um, so we would be uh, obviously you know anytime a grievance comes forward we do have legal costs and the rest of it that go with a grievance and we would not win that grievance so if we didn't hire this individual, it will be grieved. We will not win the grievance. And then through that process, we will end up hiring this individual. Because the council, the council voted to have a minimum number of firefighter paramedics in the fire department. Regardless, I'm sorry, can, Please. regardless of who made the decision to go below that limit, there was an issue we were voting potentially for the council to not maintain that number when we were going over the budget, but now the fire department 
for whatever reason, we're dipping below that. So does it, did it matter who created the reason why we go below the 67? In, in, the, in the agreement way back when, was, was it differentiated? Well, it wasn't way back when, it was in the last year. In, last year then, what, was, it, was it part of the agreement that regardless of who makes the decision to dip below that number, we have to build it back up to that number? I do not know that for one way or another for a fact, Alderman Sampson. Is there a way we could find that out? Is it because this, this one person, from what I see, we're going one below. Is it, is the city in a position where the fire department cannot operate without that one individual? Uh, we are, I believe, uh, personnel below in the management end of the fire department. This is a, this is a represented employee here. We are below in the non-represented employee category, which is not, which is a, a different category and is not under contract. So then if, if we, for example, do not choose to go and bring the number back up to the minimum 67 with this one individual, we go to the grievance issue and we lose, they would force us then to hire somebody at that Correct. point? Correct. We would be legally obligated to hire somebody at that point uh, if that was the finding in the grievance process and grievances also cost us money. Okay, thank you. Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I guess the reason I have some difficulty with this is that there's a great likelihood if we hire this person that the person's gonna to have to be laid off in a few months uh, based on, uh, we, didn't have, we didn't have the money when we raised the hiring freeze last year to hire the four, we didn't have the money for that. We kicked it down the road. Now we're gonna hire another person, we're gonna train that person, and in all likelihood, at the end of the year, when we're not bound by this contract this year and we reorganize the fire department, if that's, is that, if that's what strategic fiscal planning is planning on doing eventually, I hate to hire somebody and then have to lay them off in seven months. I don't think it's fair to the person just to be in compliance with an agreement that we have with the union. It's foolish. You know, it's not fair to that person. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Remember, we accepted $100,000 in concession from the fire department to do this. So I would think we could at least keep our word for a few months, or else uh, the $100,000 goes back some way or another. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Pauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd be happy to give that $100,000 back. 95. Tell me how I can do that. Sign me up for that option. Uh, that vote didn't go my way. Uh, I think. We uh, it had to do with hiring four, wasn't that back when we were gonna hire four firefighters and in return for four very expensive firefighters who get uh, Cadillac benefits packages, we got $100,000 for hiring four $55,000, $60,000 a year expenses with benefits probably. Um, we got $100,000. So I, I urge my colleagues to vote no. I appreciate what, uh, um, what uh, Alderman Montemayor said about keeping our, our word. Uh, but I think times are different uh, now. We understand the economics a little bit better. We understand the challenges uh, ahead of us for next budget year because we solved this budget year through some budget, some short, short-sighted, short-term budget solutions, not long-term, and adding another headcount that gets those Cadillac uh, benefit packages uh, is economically unsound. So I would urge you to vote against it. Uh, be, because we just, we, we can't afford it. And knowing what we know about what's going on in Madison right now, even if they do sue it, and you know how I feel about that, I wrote an article in the paper saying, let them sue. Wouldn't that really reveal their true colors uh, if they were forced to sue the taxpayers in a time of the economics that we're in now? So I say, I say it's worth that money uh, that we would pay to defend that grievance. Uh, and so I urge you to vote no to send the signal that a year and a half from now, which, you know, we grieve it, we wait, we wait. Uh, a, a year from now, it could be a very different picture when we're walking into negotiations next summer. Uh, based on what's going on in Madison now and, and the intentions of the Senate and the House and the intentions of this governor, we could be in a much better bargaining position if we sit on this, we do not approve it, and we wait uh, and let Madison take its course and then see what position we're in for next year. So I urge you to vote no. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Alderman Rindfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I too, I, I think, have some concerns about perhaps bringing somebody on. I can't imagine myself you know, being hired on, learning, and then also being turned around and, and laid off. 
Uh, in fact, in the private enterprise, I did have that ex experience of being hired during growth period and then uh, with less than a year being laid off uh, at Lear. Um, it's not very pleasant, it's not very nice. Um, however, we hear a lot of conversation about running the city as a business. And one thing that's, that's tried and true in the business world is when you make an agreement, you stick to the agreement. You're not gonna get very far when you borrow from a bank, you promise to pay them back and go, ah, times are different, I'm not gonna pay that back. Um, when you sign a contract with a supplier, uh, and decide, no, I'm not going to do, do what the contract signs. Um, you know, a, 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 my personal commitments to following through with what I promise, as well as trying to run the city as, as professionally, as business-like as possible, the agreement was made. Um, and regardless of how the vote went when the agreement was made, it was made. And I'm going to honor that. Uh, so I have a tough time, I guess, looking at that individual. I think we still need to look overall at the structure of that department. But at the same time, you know, we're trying to run the city as a business, and businesses don't succeed very well when they break their promises to their customers, to their employees, to their vendors, to their banks, to whoever. So I will support this at this time. Thank you, Alder Member Inflation. Alder Person Montemayor again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The four firefighters to replace the eight retirees, that w that and the hundred thousand dollars, that wasn't all a quid pro quo to keep the 77, <clears throat> 67. There was also fire station number five that the citizens wanted open. There was a lot of things going on at that time. And the fire department tried to help us. And that was one of the things that they offered to us, and we took it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Bowers? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with uh, Alderman Bourne. Um, are we going to be up front with this gentleman and tell or the firefighter, are we going to tell him you're probably only going to be here for a couple of months and I don't know if you have to or not or if they read the papers. But in all probability, uh, <clears throat> he will be gone or she will be gone uh, when the new contracts are negotiated. So I'm going to vote no just because of the fact I hate to see someone hired on and then have to be let go. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. I see no further lights up here. Is there any other discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Samson? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? No. Lauren? No. Bauk? No. And Bowers? No. Ten eyes, six no's. Motion carries. 2233 by Alder Persons Hannah, Vanderweel, and Versi to allocate $40,000 from the medical insurance account to be used for incentive programs sponsored by the Wellness Committee for Health Risk Analysis, also known as HRA, and Biometrics Programs for Employees. Bob, we need to refer that. Oh, that finance. needs to be referred? Okay. Yep. That is going to be referred to finance? Yes. To finance. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. 2234 and 2235 lie over. 2236 and 2237 to be referred. Report of committee... 2238 by finance recommending approving information technology department policies IT01 through IT05 first reading. Thank you, Mr. Alderman Mayor. Hammond. I, make a, a mo I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Just as a point of clarification, our new IT director or manager um, put these together and it's a great start as uh, to start to bring all of our IT things together. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to read it, I'd encourage you to read it and I, I think this is just a start of many good things to be coming out of our IT area. So. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion, roll call please. Anna? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Raisler. Aye. Samson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. And Hammond. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries, 2239, report of committee nine, 2239, by salary and grievances recommending amending charter ordinance number 19798 regarding the appointment of the city assessor so as to change the term from five years to two years. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I ask that the RC be accepted, adopted, and have the charter ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we just uh, get some clarification as to why we're decreasing the number from five to two, please? Alderman Hanna, please. The uh, Strategic Fiscal uh, Planning Committee um, thought that at this time it was prudent uh, to restrict the term to two years because uh, we're hoping to come up with some meaningful change uh, and we didn't want to tie a director into a five-year term. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Answer your question, Alderman Sampson? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Hammond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Attorney McLean, just a couple quick questions, and maybe it's outside the realm of this, but um, regarding the city assessor, is that a state statute that we have to have one? Does it have to be an employee of the city? Can it be outsourced? And what, what is the... Uh, the city needs to have a city assessor. <coughs> it does not have to be a full-time city employee. A uh, number of cities and villages contract out for, with uh, firms for assessing services. Does that, do they have to be under their own department, or can they fall under other... Um, do they have to be autonomous, I guess, is my well, point? Well, uh, the city assessor has certain authority, and uh, I don't believe you want to get the position where someone above the, the assessor that's qualified and, and uh, meets the requirements under the statute to be the assessor is told how or, or uh, what to assess properties, if that's what you're getting at. That's one thing that I've always understand, since, understood since my first day in the mayor's office is there's one department that you don't try to influence. It's the city assessor's office. Uh, it's a big can of worms if you do. It's the quickest way to uh, um, to uh, have hints of corruption in, a, in an administration is if you're messing with the assessor's office. So it needs to remain independent, in my opinion. Thank That's you. your question? Yep, thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, when we're voting on this uh, uh, report of committee tonight, are we voting on just changing the term or are we voting for a specific person for this position? I know back on December 20th, uh, you uh, brought forth a name. Uh, this is, this is strictly for the term. Uh, it, it, after this is adopted, um, there can't be an appointment for 60 days, if I understand right. correctly. The first time we would do an appointment would be the first part of May. Okay, so then we're this not is, voting on an individual tonight. This we're is just strictly voting for on... the term. Okay, thank you. Alderman Rindflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my concerns were uh, similar to what Alderman Bo uh, Bourne had spoken on. Um, you know, I understand that because there's discussion of some change, as we heard from Alderman Hanna, uh, and that perhaps that position, but we also heard from the attorney that there's the state statutes, certain guidelines. It seems to me that uh, if we're looking at making some changes, but we need to know what we're going to go up against in the state statutes, that should be looked at first before making some ch some change in the terms. Um, um, we don't have one appointed right now, that's correct? We, we have an interim. We have an interim? Appointment right okay. now. Um, is there a time frame how long the interim can stay interim until such point that one has to change over? I'd be more comfortable um, keeping the interim tag on right now until either salary grievances or some other committee figures out what the goal is. It's a strategic fiscal, you know, looking at the long term, um, then changing the charter ordinance um, to make it specifically five years to two years if there's something else that can be done or look at direction. This is really kind of the first that I've you know, I've known from the candidate being proposed, and we haven't, it hasn't come back yet. Uh, I heard that the, this was going to be discussed. 
and I pride myself being uninformed, but quite frankly, this is the first debate I've heard between what they'd like to do and the, what the state says we can and cannot do. I'd rather get more information on this before I vote. So I'm gonna vote no at this point in time, not because I'm against necessarily a two year, but quite frankly, I don't know if that's the right idea to, or that's the direction the committee really wants to go. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, regarding, regarding interim appointments, uh, I believe, in, in my opinion, interim appointments are until a, a permanent person can be appointed. Uh, too many administrations use interim appointments to take unqualified people and put them in positions because they do not have to be confirmed by the council. And therefore, I do not believe in long-term interim appointments. I believe that people that are appointed to a position of authority should be confirmed by the council and should be vetted as such. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a good conversation with uh, Alderman Bourne earlier today. Um, and I feel more comfortable if there's a 60-day uh, public input opportunity that we can get clarification, get some answers uh, for all the person Lynn Fleisch's question. So I think it's, uh, it's moving at the pace at which it should move. This is something that needs to be vetted and discussed by the public. Thank you, Alderman Hanna and Alderman Boren. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryan. Uh, in fairness to the candidate, that's the uh, the, uh, the person that's the interim. In fairness to that person, I think they're being compensated for being the interim because of the uh, because of the additional duties. I think I remember that from one of the salary and grievance committees. Is that correct? Yes. All interim appointments end up with a, uh, I believe it's an eight percent raise, eight percent pay raise for interim. Is there any further discussion? Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we do not pass this charter ordinance, then we're with the original ordinance of a five-year term if in the future we do hire an assessor. So if at that time we wanted to change it, we'd come back to this charter ordinance again. If, if, this, if this ordinance amending, if, if this charter ordinance, this amendment to the ordinance does not pass this evening, it will remain as a five-year appointment. I see no lights. If there is no further discussion, too soon. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I just just to clarify, was that checked into that we can go from five to two? Can we? Yes. I mean, legally, so that legally we can by changing the ordinance. Okay. So so it's not an issue with the state now. So we don't have to wait to find out. We already know. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if I could, Steve. Uh, this is a charter ordinance. It doesn't take effect for sixty days if it's. Uh, upon passage and publication it uh, doesn't take effect for 60 days, allows citizens to uh, petition for a referendum on it if they wish. And also requires a two thirds vote for passage. Thank you, Steve. Alderman Bell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, that, that helped. Steve answered, partially answered the question. I just didn't understand between what Alderman Ryan Fleisch was saying and Alderman Hanna. So if we pass this, it passes. Uh, in the 60-day period that Alderman Hanna was talking about, that would have to be a referendum to undo that, is what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and it probably doesn't rise to that. So what I thought I heard Alderman Reinfleisch saying was, maybe we need some more learning time, some more investigation time. Um, and I just wanted to clarify what, what Alderman Hanna was saying. It would take, it'd take a lot of effort to undo. If we vote to approve it tonight, it would take a lot of effort to undo that. So it's not like we have this 60-day waiting period where we're actually going to vote on it 60 days from now. Tonight's the vote. So I, um, I may vote no. I think I'll vote no because of what Alderman Reinfleisch said, just to learn some more before we approve it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Thank you, Alderman Boak. Last chance. Anybody else? I see no more lights here. Roll call, please. Heideman? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Bowers? Aye. Decker? No. Hammond? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Hannah? Aye. Eight to eight, it's a, a, a tie vote. Uh, however, the motion fails because it's not a two-thirds majority. Right. Motion fails. 
Ordinances introduced 10, 2240 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 2141, resolution number 209-1011 by Alderman Boren, authorizing executing a one-year lease for the agricultural property in the town of Wilson, formerly owned by John Poth, Jr. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Cuth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries, 2142, resolution number 210-1011, by Alder Persons Hammond, Bauk, Boren, Rindfleisch, and Raisler, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget, establish revenue and appropriation for community development block grant, emergency assistance program for Center Avenue, Washington Court, North 6th Street, and Wisconsin Avenue, stormwater improvements, and establish appropriation for appraisal fees. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Yeah, is this part of the uh, capital improvements program? And uh, how much money are we appropriating to these um, this is part of the capital improvements program. Also, uh, part of it is CDBG funded. Chad, would you like to speak on this? Chad Pelashek, our uh, manager of economic development. This is that money that you'll recall the city received at the end of the year from Commerce, the 499000 This is a total grant of about $1.3 million. Um, they originally gave the city 402000 through flood recovery dollars. Then they amended it and gave us another 654000 And then at the end of the year, they called and said they had another 499500 So it's being used over uh, near the 5th and New York project to expand that out because it had to be specific to that area per the grant and the dollars that were coming from the federal government. Okay. Alderman Bowers? Yeah, uh, I guess my next question is, uh, this is very good because our infrastructure is really in bad shape, especially from uh, Union Avenue in the south to Geely Avenue. Do, does the Public Works Department uh, have a priority in certain sections of town or certain areas that they were, every year we're going to uh, uh, the facilitate? Cap yes. The Capital Improvements Program identified key streets. Yep. Um, and like this year, the, the project that the city is moving forward out of uh, re assessment dollars would be the South 18th Street. Mm -hmm. We are also scheduled to redo, resurface Superior Avenue uh, with block grant dollars and North Avenue as part of an assessment. So the, it, they're, they look at the roads that have the most traffic counts and determine what qualifies for what funding and try to get the best bang for a dollar. Okay, thank you. The uh, Capital Improvements Commission meets on this annually, and uh, the Capital Improvements Commission, um, which uh, takes advice from the Department of Public Works and City Engineering on, <coughs> on the condition of streets, uh, weighs that in deciding which streets get repaired when. But this was uh, this is for four hundred ninety nine thousand dollars that the uh, state was Department of Commerce. Uh, I guess they were emptying out the coffers at the end of the year because I think they came forward with this like. December 30th or something like that. They found an extra half a million stash somewhere that they offered us, so we took it. Okay, any further discussion on this issue? There is none. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Anna? Aye. Heinemann? Aye. Ancott? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10, 2240 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 2141, resolution number 209 1011 by Alderman 
Warren, excuse me, authorizing executing a one-year lease. Oh, wait a second here. Well, I think you're on the wrong page. I just, I just missed the page here. There we go. Let's go into this one. Other matters authorized by law. 2241 will be referred to public protection and safety. Attorney McLean, other, uh, other matters? You. Thank you, Your Honor. 2242 is a communication from Richard Hartman, President of the Sporting County Taxpayers Alliance, stating their position on the situation of Madison with regards to the state budget. Uh, that will lie over. 2243 is a claim from Aaron Kennedy, Transpac Solutions, for alleged damages to his vehicle when a city snowplow hit the back of his vehicle when he was trying to slow down because his vehicle was sliding. That will be referred to risk management. 2244 is an RO by building inspection, submitting the report of the building inspection department for the month of, or for the year 2010. It will be referred to public protection and safety. 2245 is submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. Referred to law and licensing. 2246 is an ordinance granting Sheboygan Columbus Institute, its successors and assigns, privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 9th Street located at 833 Center Avenue in the city for the purpose of maintaining the building. To city planning. 2247 is an RO by the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations submitting a request to engage consultative services from the Center for Political Science and Public Policy Research from the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater to perform a two-phase analysis for the city. Will be referred to finance. 2248 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a, an agreement for consultative services from the Center for Political Science and Public Policy Research from the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater to perform a two-phase analysis for the city. Also referred to finance. 2249 is an ordinance relating to no parking, stopping, standing, so as to change the parking limits on the east and west sides of South 12th Place. Will be referred to public protection and safety. Thank you, Steve. Move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, everybody. <laughs>